it's good fat. Food is fire and cookie is meat, so it's fire meat. Okay. Okay. It's not that spicy. That's what she said. Um. <laughs> She was born in the outskirts of Seoul to an American GI and a young Korean woman. He was born in Alsace, France, land of pork and cabbage. She was put up for adoption at three and then lovingly raised in Virginia by her new family. He was 16 when he began his apprenticeship. She found her birth mother when she was 19. He came to America and became one of the world's greatest chefs. They fell in love and married over a decade ago. Now, Jean Georges and Marja return to her birthplace to chronicle the tastes and traditions of Korea. These are the Kimchi Chronicles. Cows have historically been considered symbolic creatures, not a source of food. Their spiritual presence had a lot to do with Buddhism flourishing in Korea under the Gyoryeo dynasty. Then, under the Joseon dynasty from 14 to 1900, Confucianism prevailed, and cows could only be eaten if sacrificed following strict religious rituals. All of this bovine spirituality, coupled with the fact that grazing lands are scarce in mountainous Korea, meant beef was food only for kings, nobility, and the moneyed. This, despite the fact that the Mongolian invasion in the 13th century left behind a taste for beef, barbecued over an open fire. But it would be another 700 years before the general population would get a chance to have that taste experience. Remarkably, it wasn't until the 1960s and 70s that beef went mainstream. Enter Korean favorites like bulgogi, thinly sliced prime cuts of ribeye that are marinated and grilled, or cooked traditionally in hot pans with noodles and broth. There's also kalbi, sliced short ribs that get marinated and grilled, just like bulgogi. And brisket sliced paper thin for chadolbagi, which is cooked for only seconds so that the supposedly healthy fat just has time to go from translucent to white. Some of the best barbecue is said to be found in Seoul. Korea's hyper-energetic capital was founded in 16 BC and became the capital of the Joseon Dynasty in 1394. Today, the city and its outskirts are the world's second largest metropolitan area with a population of 24.5 million. That's a lot of appetites in one place and Seoul's inhabitants are discerning beef eaters. Since it opened its doors in 1939, Hanilguan, a restaurant in Seoul's Shinsadong neighborhood, has been famous for its beef. Nowadays, a sleek multi-floor restaurant, diners come to Hanilguan for their bulgogi. My Korean food guru Diana Kang comes here with her family just about every Sunday. We're actually at a restaurant where it's one of the few remaining uh, restaurants that serve this way. It's a very old-fashioned, traditional way to have bulgogi. For our all-beef extravaganza, I also invited Jennifer Flynn, an American food blogger who speaks Korean like a native and eats like one too. Bulgogi has a, a very literal term, which is? Yeah, food is fire and gogi is meat, so it's fire meat. Nowadays, most people just grill their bulgogi, but at Hanilguan, they do their meat in a copper pan that's said to resemble yeah. the battle helmets of Mongolian invaders. Here, they prepare bulgogi in the jungle style which means the meat goes from plain barbecue to full-on stew, enriched with a flavorful beef broth and piled with mushrooms, scallions, and noodles. What kind of beef is this? In this restaurant, they serve sliced ribeye. Mmm, okay. The history behind this concept of thinly sliced beef was to stretch it. But actually, this would have started out as very high-level court cuisine. The Mongolians brought a lot more meat eating mm -hmm. to the Korean court when they took over. Because before that, Koreans, especially devout Buddhists, would have been primarily vegetarian. Right. And so you get a lot of this meat eating at court. It's also, meat is expensive. Right. So this would have been very high class cuisine. It really wasn't until, say, the 70s and 80s that right. most Koreans most could eat 
right. beef on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. You know, the best part about this bulgogi is the, the broth, and you can taste it. Mm, oh, it's so, so rich. Good. Isn't it good? It's served, as always in Korean cuisine, with an array of panjan, the small side dishes with a variety of ingredients, flavors, and textures. Of course, garlic always. And then the samjang is very good. You put a little bit of samjang on top. And to add another layer to the meal, we wrap the cooked beef in lettuce and ginyip to form sams. How many restaurants uh, does John Church have now? I think we're at 32 this year. 32? Wow. But don't hold me to that because I can't keep up. Sort of like the number of shoes you traveled with. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you heard about that. <laughs> well, a girl can't have too many shoes, can That's she? That's what I say. Well, this is the best bulgogi I've ever had. This is amazing bulgogi. It's really good. A lot of garlic. It's sweet, but not too sweet. It's got the perfect balance of salty sweet. I haven't been here before, but I'm coming back because that was extraordinary. For another transcendent bulgogi, it's worth the three-hour drive from Seoul to Andong, known as the spiritual capital of Korea. While most make the trek for spiritual reasons, it was the bulgogi that drove me. Hawe Tenjang Ma'u is a family business known for its homemade tenjang, fermented soybean paste that the family has been making for the last 600 years through 19 generations. Row after row, the 3,000 jangdok are lined up like little soldiers in a tenjang army. And the math is impressive. Each pot of tenjang is worth about $1,800, which translates to a few million for the entire lot. Not bad for a bunch of old beans. We lunched with the matriarch of the family, the beautifully serene Young Hee Chung, whose face fully conveyed her happiness. My adopted cousin April and I joined her for a meal at Bulgogi Jungle. Potato noodles, lots of vegetables, chrysanthemum leaves, scallion. It was the homemade tenjang that made the bulgogi truly transcendent. Okay. Okay. That's really good. You don't even need meat with this soybean paste. It's delicious. It, it's kind of reminiscent of miso, but mm -hmm. more flavorful. And yes. I couldn't get over Grandmother Chung's youthful appearance and wonderful energy, which she attributed, of course, to lots of tenjang as well as lots of vegetables and a healthy dose of soju. My kind of girl. She also seems to favor huge amounts of raw garlic tucked into psalms that she continuously fed April and me. So subtle, here we go with the garlic again. <laughs> Back in Seoul, there's Chadoljip, an unassuming restaurant in the Shinsedong neighborhood, which has been called the Peter Luger of Korea. It's distinguished by the high quality of their brisket. Super thin slices of brisket are the base of chadalbagi, another favorite Korean beef dish. The meat is grilled only for a few seconds, just enough time for the fat to barely turn white. Not bad. It's not fat? It's, it's, it's a good one. Really? Yeah. I didn't know there was such a thing as good fat. It's big fat. <laughs> and then there's Korea's prized homegrown beef, hanu. Hanu can be pricey, but it holds its own with the top beef from around the world. Joining me was my friend and TV executive, Ki Jun Cho, and his colleague, Hyun Mo An, an anchor woman. We got to talking about the youngest generation of Koreans. They've grown up with beef as part of their day-to-day -day life. You know, I really love places where you can cook your own food. Maybe you should call it CIY, like DIY. Cook, cook it yourself? <laughs> and what do you eat this with? Do you do the same? You uh, dip it in the sauce? You, can, you oh, can go okay. either way, with the sauce or your salt. Personal preference, that's good. Mmm, it's delicious. It's just dripping, it melts in your mouth. Oh, I love looking at that charcoal, it's great. In old time, up until the 70s, mm -hmm. beef is more like uh, for the upper class. Right. Class the symbol of affluence. Right. right. But right now, it's more like a very common. 
huge change from 60s and 70s. Because we were always under the rule of the Japanese people, mm -hmm. we, I think in our DNA we have the character of we always have to win, we always right. have to overcome. Right, and better some, ourselves. You know, stronger hands. Yes. Would Han be a good word to... Han? Would that be a good word to... In his generation, that was Han. Mm -mm. But now, in our generation, it's more of confidence. Right. So, well said. Yeah. Han has changed to... Confidence. Down. Okay. All right. So we've had beer, we've had soju, now we're going to have... We're in makgeolli. Makgeolli. Uh, this is a kind of rice wine. And this is made out of, out of uh, white uh, rice? Uh, rice, rice. Mm. Try this one. Love the color. Here's the okay. barbecue. Koreans love it, Americans love it. I'm going to continue to eat it, and thank you for bringing me here. Kombe! Yayo! It's nice. For kalbi, sliced and grilled short ribs, we return to Haneokwan, where the meat cooks in a matter of just a few minutes. It's a short rib, yeah, and you it's still amazing. have the bone attached to the, the beef part it's of it. It's sliced so thinly, and that bone is clean as a whistle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. After you cook it, you can actually, they'll gnaw the last little bit yeah, off the bone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sure got it'll be so much flavor. Yeah, it'll be nice and caramelized. But there's Delicious. Two cuts of kalbi in Korea. Mm -hmm. There's this, which is the more traditional one, called right. wang kalbi. And then there's another one where you actually get the bone this way. And that's mm. called LA kalbi. Oh, okay. um, there's a couple of explanations for why it's called that. Right. One explanation says that it originated in Los Angeles. Right. The other one says that the LA stands for lateral, lateral cut. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, that that Look good. at that coloring, it's amazing. Do you think I could get the secret recipe for this marinade? I see the look on the face, it's a no. <laughs> Onions and mushrooms get grilled alongside and everything gets cut with scissors and then wrapped in lettuce with pickled radish, raw garlic and samjang, a mix of red pepper and soybean paste. Mm. How do you like it with the rabbit? It's really good. I've it never had it that way. It has the like tartness it. to it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get this little burst of flavor there. It's delicious. We're doing kalbi right. as well, which is typically, uh, these are the Korean cuts. That's a traditional Korean cut. So you have the bone and the, the way they cut it, they roll it up. Oh, I see. And you don't find it that often in uh, Korean restaurants now, just because it's, it's kind of difficult to do that Time cut. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the American cat because I think the butcher here is not as skilled. So they cut it straight on the bone. Yeah. Right. But actually, it's, it's nice to eat because you can hold it by the bone. And we eat it all the time. So really? Yeah, it's great. Mm. Nice. nice. Similar marinade, uh, ginger, garlic, sugar, soy sauce, yeah. onion. Seven up. I just love that. <laughs> Asian pear. Yeah. And some uh, the alcohol, the uh, shoju. Mm -hmm. So we're going to blend it again. <laughs> what, 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 what no, this? this goes actually yeah, on top of the beef. Later. Done. Oh, this you started. clean too? You are on fire. Great. I'm an actor. <laughs> I've, I've been in restaurants as long as he has. Ah. <laughs> he did the dishes the first time he came to my mother's for dinner. My mother said, marry him. Really? <laughs> Babe, you haven't done the dishes ever. Ah. Not even a dishwash load. No? Come on, oh, you something. must have at the beginning. I never. <laughs> so I'm going to pour that marinade on top of the beef. You want to add the sesame seeds on the scallion? I still like Go washing again. the dishes in the restaurant. Really? I did it for about two months, like a game. And that when it gets really busy, like between 8.30, 9.30, and they're shoving in plates, you're like, come on, and everyone's yelling, <laughs> so play the music loud. You'd like it. How long have we been marinated this way? Well, this one would be marinated overnight. <laughs> what did you say, how long have we been married? I know, I thought it was a joke. How long have we been married? <laughs> well, I know, well, we didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> marinated. All right, on the area, a couple of days after? Or? The next day. day. Next day. So this is overnight. Should right. we start uh, cooking? Yep. Yeah. Steak looks amazing. Steak, yeah. There we go. Oh, nice steak. Good. Ooh. Good. So this oh. is a wagyu from uh, just a little bit of salt from there from your your country. Fantastic. Salt, pepper. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's chili. Careful now. It's good. <laughs> Where are you going? Marshall, you want to put a bit of a sesame oil into sure. the into the pan? All oh, right. I think there's enough fat in the uh, in the beef. And now we're gonna grill some of those guys. One of those. Fantastic. So with that beef, with that beef, we're thinking about doing kimchi butter. So if you want to put the butter into the into the bowl, we're gonna smash it with some chopped kimchi. Mm-hmm. Smash. Yeah. And then some juice of yep. the kimchi. 
Well, just mix it up. I got some refrigerator already. Ah, prepared before. See that? I thought the, I thought the French used a lot of butter. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think we can flip the, the big steak over there. Okay, go, Dad, okay. go. Like what, you're, what we're cooking here, this is all traditional? This is traditional, and this is something uh, we put together. This is your thing, right. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. That's good. Mm. And then you roll it in a piece of plastic. Ah. And then we're just going to cut it. a slice on the... Uh, and put the slice oh, on top. Perfect. On top of the steak. Can you guess how many ounces one of those steaks are? Huh? Right. So that's what I have to have every two hours. 12 ounces of meat. Every two hours? Every two hours. Right now. That's your diet. Yeah, that's my diet. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Deb, flip on the flipper. Yes. That looks nice, good. Beautiful. Love the sizzle. Me too. So in Korea, typically this particular kalbi would be uh, eaten more well done. Not medium right. rare like okay. uh, we like to eat in the states. Yeah. When's it going to be at John George's restaurant in Korea? Oh, maybe one day. Or maybe maybe, uh, maybe in a, or maybe a Korean MV. restaurant in New York. Right. An yeah. MV restaurant. <laughs> hey, that yeah, would work. Come on. I'm waiting. Thank you, Hugh. <laughs> Putting in our vote here. And these? These look great. Oh, that looks good. Ooh. That looks nice. And okay, maybe we want to cut a slice of the butter. It's like a compound butter. Mm. So we have the kimchi butter melting on top of the steak. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Already there. Right. Already there. Yeah. Already there. Yum. This kimchi looks good with it. It was good. How's it with the butter? <laughs> Rich. Delicious. How's that? Oh. See? Mmm. Perfectly cooked. Really beautiful. Mmm. That's amazing. It's really good. Tasting steak? Wagyu beef. Delicious. Good taste. This is Australian beef. Really good. Mm. Yummy? Mm -hmm. mm. So, surprisingly enough, I've got a very odd utensil that I love to use in my kitchen. I use it all the time. Scissors. Kitchen scissors. Mm. And Koreans love to use scissors in the kitchen. It just saves time, and especially with meat, you're trying to, you know, serve a lot of people. At one time, you've got these long strips, so it's just easier to cut it like that. Are you going to be able to eat that, Oscar? Okay. You like spicy? Yeah. He's very adventurous with his food. And then you're going to wrap it up like this. Marja is much better than <laughs> You love it? Yummy. You it's know, the weird thing they do with uh, Korean food is they shove it all this. in at once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Having a full mouth and slurping is considered <laughs> oh, perfectly, really? perfectly fine. It's a compliment to the, to the chef. If you slurp your food and okay. stuff your mouth, go dab. Thank you. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> is that the way you do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the scallion salad with it. It's delicious. Yeah, right? I don't know if I can do it all in one go like you, darling. Well, it would be rude not to try, wouldn't it? It would be really <laughs> rude not to try. <laughs> oh, look. Okay, here we are together. Minuscule. Wait, I got to feed you. you. Yeah. Hold it's on. Some more okay, jean George, you and I. Ready? <laughs> Come on, babe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 right, I'm joining the full mouth club. Maybe not on national television. Good flavor. Good flavor. Mm. Oh, good. <laughs> Love it. That beef is so good. I have to actually confess something. When we moved into the building, we knew you've always been one of our favorite chefs. We hadn't learned about your fantastic cooking yet, mm -hmm. but I did say to Oscar, make sure you make friends with Chloe and get invited for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've experienced this, we'll be coming down a lot more often. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. I've been smelling your food for years, and it's so nice to actually taste it. It's perfect, it's beautiful. I feel so happy to be able to share a little bit of myself with you guys um, through the food, and um, I hope you enjoy it, and you thank guys you. get a little more adventurous, and I'm bringing you a bucket of kimchi tomorrow. <laughs> we'll make you a pavlova. Thank you guys. Thank you for really Cheers. Cheers. Come back. Cheers. Come back. 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 Come Slightly pricier cuts like short ribs are braised and even served for breakfast, sort of like the Korean spin on steak and eggs. Overlooking the beach in the Westin Chosun Pusan Hotel, my friend the actress Heather Graham and I did the hearty beef breakfast of champions thing. 
under the tutelage of the lovely Diana, where we shared each other's big portions of kalbitang and yukejang. I didn't eat anything, so I could really eat a lot today. I really, dig into this yeah. Korean breakfast, which I happen to love, and every time I come to Korea, I don't think I see a croissant or a piece of bread mm. for breakfast. So that's you know healthier, I mean? right? There are people eating vegetables for right. breakfast. That's... Heather, you are having the uh, beef short rib soup, mm -hmm. and it has dates and ginseng mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. actually balance the beef, so right. it's really mm. good for you, right? Mm, I love dates. And Marja, you're having the uh, beef, the spicy, jang. right, yuke yuke jang 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 soup. Um, which is also known as the hangover cure as well. Right. Thanks so to you, you <laughs> last night. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Did not you guys go crazy last night? Yes, well, not too much. Well, not too much. <laughs> yes. And then, of course, you know, a meal would not be complete without kimchi. Mm. So even though it's breakfast, we have kimchi. kimchi. And this is, by the way, scallion pancake with mm. um, shrimp and oh, seafood. Shrimp yeah. Right. What are those red things? There is little peppers, but oh. it's not that spicy. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spiciness is good. Mm -hmm. Scallion Sesame. pancakes are the best. They are. Oh, it is spicy though. This is good. We don't think it's spicy, right? Mm -mm. I'm a wuss. <laughs> um, okay, so if um, people are eating this much at breakfast, what do they eat at lunch? They eat this much at lunch? Yes. Wow. So we Koreans believe like that having, <laughs> having rice and kimchi mm -hmm. at every meal is a mm -hmm. must. And then, of course, you balance it out with vegetables. Obviously, it takes too much time to prepare breakfast early in the morning like this. Yeah, this is a lot right. of work, right? Mm -hmm. So young people are switching to you know toast and cereal. Right. Once you get hooked on this type of uh, breakfast, it, I think you you need to have it all the time. Do you guys want to try this soup? Yeah, so I'm good. Try it. Here. Also, what is this thing though? It's ginseng root. Oh, and ginseng vitality? will give you yes. Ginseng mm. will clar good. clarify your body mm. and also give you Especially strength. Oh, good. I know. I think this is my favorite. Soup. We usually eat it when you're feeling a little bit weak. It's like it's our like Korean chicken, chicken soup. soup yeah. you know? uh -huh. So when That's you're feeling good. kind of um, sick, yeah. your mother will always make mm. you short rib soup. Is there a region in Korea that is famous for? Yukejang, this brisket soup. It's, it's supposed to represent sort of Korea. That it has mm. the uh, mountain vegetables from different parts of Korea. It has the beef. I want to try yours. <laughs> <laughs> Just be careful, don't take okay, a big slurp. Really, really this is very really spicy as well. But brisket soup usually was sort of a commoner soup. Oh, really? It, it, it was not royal family mm. uh, recipe. Yeah, let me try Very yours. Very spicy. Mm -hmm. Beef was for wealthy people, but brisket soup, it, you don't really require a lot of beef. So you actually have noodles and a lot more vegetables and scallion mm -hmm. in it than beef. Mm -hmm. It's only recently that you, you put in a lot more beef. I think mine is Good. amazing. I feel like I'm the only one just chowing down. <laughs> no, no, we're busy talking and explaining this. No, that's great. I'm, I'm glad you have such enthusiasm for it. All right, now I feel very healthy and ready to just go and do fun things. We need to take a jog after this so we can get ready for our... We can be ready for lunch. That's what I'm talking right. about. One final note. When John George and I fly to or from Korea, we have our standing routine. We both firmly believe that bibimbap is the single best meal to eat when flying. Forget soggy pasta or mystery meat. Bibimbap is the ticket. JG always passes me his to season and mix up before I can attack my own. The bibimbap manages to lull JG to sleep before I've even made a dent in mine. But no worries, when I've finished, I find myself a comfy position. Not all that mechanical. And make sure I wake up my husband before I go to sleep. <laughs>